car theft. It's the cheapest way to get a car, but you're not supposed to do it. So much so that car manufacturers go to great lengths to make sure you can't do it. Well, most car manufacturers, anyway. Kia and Hyundai cut a couple of corners in the anti-theft department a few years back, and now the US is experiencing a huge spike in auto theft. Whoopsie! But what exactly makes the hamster car so much more swipeable than a Corolla? In a word, design. See, most cars are designed not to get stolen. They've got door locks, which have been around for about a century, and car alarms, which started being mass-produced in the 50s. But those are sorta swipe-or-no-swiping level features. If your door is locked, thieves can still smash a window. And if you heard a car alarm going off in your neighborhood right now, you would not go see if your car was being stolen. You would think, ugh, my neighbor's stupid car is so loud, turn up the volume on this video, and never see your car again. But there are subtler features built into most cars that prevent tons of theft. One big one is the immobilizer, which is so good that all new cars sold in Germany, Finland, the UK, Canada, and Australia are actually required to have one. Immobilizers prevent people from successfully hotwiring cars by stopping them from turning on unless the owner's specific key is in the vehicle. Now, I know the majority of Half as Interesting's audience are hardened street criminals who know why that key thing would make hot wiring impossible. But on the off chance that some of you forgot, here's a very basic and entirely legal explanation of how to hotwire a car. When you turn a key in a car, it rotates the ignition cylinder, which closes an electrical circuit between the car's battery and its engine starter. That sends some sweet voltage to the engine starter, which then, and you're not gonna believe this, starts the engine, and vroom vroom, you can drive. Hot wiring is all about bypassing the key's roll and closing that circuit yourself. Obviously, I'm not going to show you footage or nice graphics of how to do this because you already know and that would be condescending. So instead, I've asked my editors to take a metaphorical approach. To hotwire a car, you have to rip open the steering column, the part that connects the wheel to the rest of the car. Then you strip four wires, connect two of a certain color that I don't need to say because you already know, then ever so briefly touch the other two together long enough that you hear the engine start. Then you wrap all that in electrical tape because those wires will definitely electrocute you if they haven't already, and vroom vroom, you can drive. So the point of an immobilizer is to make it so that if you do all that, the car still won't start. It's made up of three components, a transponder, a reader, and a receiver. The transponder is in your key, which sends a code to the reader, which is somewhere in the car. The reader passes that code to the receiver in your car's computer control module, and if the code is the one the system knows to expect from your key, the computer will activate either the gas supply or the ignition, thus allowing the car to start. If the code isn't the one the car is expecting, the gas supply or ignition stays off, the car doesn't start, and in some cases, it'll make some annoying sound or contact a security provider. A car with an immobilizer system in place won't start unless it receives that correct code, which it obviously won't if you're hot wiring it. From the model years 2015 to 2019, 96% of cars from all but two manufacturers had immobilizers. But Kia and Hyundai, the two manufacturers in question, each decided to save a few bucks and put them in just 26% of their cars, and you can guess what happened next. Car thieves figured it out, spread the word, and suddenly Kias and Hyundais were vanishing left, right, and center. It started, as all good things do, but also this one bad thing, in Milwaukee sometime around June 2021. At that point, Hyundai and Kia thefts in Milwaukee had shot up 2,500%, shaking out to about 16 of those cars being stolen per day. For context, there were 260,699 cars registered in Milwaukee in 2021, a year in which Kia and Hyundai had a combined 9.9% market share in the US, and if you math that around a bit, at the rate people were stealing cars in 2021, you could expect every Kia and Hyundai in Milwaukee to be stolen by November 2025. And that's both a very troubling amount of car theft and a very good question for an algebra test. The lack of an immobilizer is the main design flaw that makes Kias and Hyundai so easy to steal, but it's actually not the only one. Consider that this wave of theft is largely attributed to a TikTok trend. The Kias and Hyundais getting stolen are so theft-friendly that you can get one running in under 90 seconds and teach someone how to do it in a TikTok. That's because, along with there being no immobilizer, it's just way too easy to break into the steering column and ignition cylinder. The plastic around the column is held in with just two screws that you can remove with a regulation screwdriver or rip off with relative ease. And as far as the ignition cylinder, the thing you rotate with the key is connected to the thing that closes the circuit with the starter and the battery via a little rectangular metal pin. So when you rotate the key part, it rotates the other part, which closes the circuit. 
That's not so uncommon, but usually those pieces are really hard to access and you'd have to really mess up the car to get them out. But in a Kia or Hyundai, you can pry out the key part pretty easily, leaving just the metal connector pin exposed, which you can now turn with something as simple as a USB cord to close the circuit and start the engine. Phone charger in the hole, twist, vroom vroom, you can drive the car. To show how easy it is to steal a Hyundai, I sent my outside correspondent Amy into the world with a USB cord in hopes she could, uh, yeah, just kidding. I mean, she totally stole a bunch of cars, but we didn't film it. How dumb do you think we are? See, here at Half as Interesting, we're very smart. More than smart, actually, thanks to this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. If you watch HAI, you are probably the kind of person that genuinely likes learning new stuff. So you might find it frustrating that it can be tough to fit learning into your busy schedule. But Brilliant is my answer to that. They offer highly visual, highly interactive, under 15 minute lessons that put even the most complicated STEM topics within reach. It helped me actually understand topics I could never really wrap my head around in school, like computer science, higher level math, and if I'm being honest, medium or level math. And you don't have to be chasing a STEM career to benefit. Brilliant's courses hone your analytical skills and intuition, which serve you no matter what you do. So if you're ready to finally understand calculus, or think better, or just really dig puzzles, Brilliant is for you. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash HAI or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription, and you'll be supporting this channel too.